What is happening guys, Cowboy here, and welcome to my advanced guide for Pal World. Now if you watch the starter guide and things are going along, that's fantastic. But once you get up into the 30s, you hit a new tech threshold where you need to worry about uh, the refined ingots, you need to get quartz, you need to get higher quality cloth. And on top of all this stuff, obviously you want to ramp up your base production. So that's going to be the purpose of this video. I want to go in depth into what pals I would recommend to keep your base running. We're going to be talking about locations for those pals. And we're going to be talking about where you find some of the stuff and how to ramp up production of your base so that you can advance through the 430s and 40s into the end game. So uh, first up, let's just hop on over. And the very first thing we're going to do is talk about pals. Now, before I get into the full list, I do want to give honorable mention to Elizabeth. Uh, while she's not particularly good at any one thing, she is a very good all-rounder. We got two at seeding, two at handicraft, two at gathering, one in lumber, and two in medicine. So I like having two of these in the base just because they're good to, to kind of spread out and do a little bit of everything. Uh, but hopping into the main list, first up, Jormantide Ignis. This guy is a tier 4 kindler. Very, very good at cooking those ingots. Highly recommend. Moving down from him, we have Blaze Howl Knocked. Blaze Howl is only at three, but we can get him significantly earlier compared to Ignis, making him just as valuable to have somebody to keep those furnaces going. As for water, the Azure Robe is at a tier three water. We can get these very early in the game. So as for watering, this should fulfill all of your watering needs for quite a while. Moving on from there to seeding, we have two choices that I would recommend, Lilene as well as Petalina. Petalina, we can get uh, or Petalia, I guess. We can get her significantly earlier. Uh, Lylan, you're going to need to be up in the, the high 30s, low 40s to go again and get her. But level 4, level 3, respectively, for seeding. I really like Petalia because she also has a little bit more spread out in terms of stats. Lylan is great, but to be honest, she's more of like a party member to me than a, uh, than a base pal. Uh, moving on to electric, Grizzbolt is at 3 electric. We can get him very early, kind of right around 20. Uh, we also have Relaxosaurus Lux, which is another option, but he is all the way up in the 30s. Now, moving on to Handicraft, we have the god himself, Anubis. Now, Anubis is pretty hard to get on the map, but we can get him via an egg very, very early on, and he is an absolute beast. Uh, 4 Handicraft, 3 Mining two in terms of transportation on top of that very very solid choice just to have in your party you really can't go wrong with having an anubis around uh, if you don't have access to him yet however wixen is a fantastic backup with three handicraft also has two points in the uh, kindling as well as two points in transportation so if there's nothing for her to build there's some other things she can do moving on from there to harvesting we have verdash now, Verdash, you can actually get off of one of the islands we'll talk about, but you can find him a little bit earlier than that as a boss. Uh, and he's also a very solid all-rounder. We got some seeding, we got some harvesting, we got handicraft, we got logging, all that stuff. But as for logging, the earliest one I would recommend is going to be Bushi. Three logging, you can get him right around level 20. He's going to handle all of your logging needs. Moving on to mining. Up at the top, we have Astagon. Tier 4 miner, but to be honest, this is more of a party member for me. If you want to farm up a couple, go for it. Uh, but the easiest ones to farm up are going to be Digitoys, and this is going to be a Tier 3 miner. Moving on from there, we have Felbat for Tier 3 medicine. Not as important in my opinion. I haven't really found medicine to be that big of a concern. Generally, I just buy it from a merchant, uh, but we'll also talk about where you can find him regardless. Now on the frost side, we have Cryolinx. You can find this guy all over the frozen areas. However, they are rather high up in the 40s. The easier way to get one is gonna be fly around that zone, find a large egg, hatch it, and hope it pops out. But if you don't have access to him, Pen King is an excellent backup and also a good multi-use with a little bit of water, a little bit of freezing, a little bit of transporting, a little bit of mining. Uh, and then we have the Wumpo Baton. You can also get the regular Baton, but this guy is a tier four transporting. So he's going to make sure everything at the base is getting picked up and put where it needs to be. And then last but not least for the farm, the Cybelix. As soon as you can get Cybelix, throw it in your farm, leave it there. It's going to produce all the high quality cloth you need, which needless to say is phenomenal. So now that we have covered that, let's jump over. We're going to go to the pal deck and talk about where to find all this stuff. Uh, obviously, there's lots of pals here. So some of these are probably spoilers. Just gonna find where is my Elizabeth? I want to talk about her since she was a honorable mention, but she is. I know she's not that low. Elizabeth, where do you be? I'm not seeing my Elizabeth at all. I probably scrolled past her. 
Just not noticed it. There she is. So, all over this zone we can find our Elizabeths. Now, Elizabeth can be a little bit tricky to find because she's typically going to be surrounded by bee guards. But generally, you'll find bee guards in groups of like three to four. And then occasionally, you'll find an Elizabeth that's surrounded by two of them. Uh, in general, I found these to be around the mid-20s going around in this area. But do want to mention her. Like I said, honorable mention, good all-rounder. But diving into the more specific ones, first up, Jormantide Ignis. Now we find him over on the PAL reservation site. There's actually three of these in the game. We have one that's down here, which is going to be around level 20, and then one up here and one up here, which are going to be in the low to mid 40s. I'm 38 and I was able to go out there and get him, uh, but that is where you're going to find your Ignis. Now, as for our alternative to him, Blaze Howl Knocked, not going to show up because it's not nighttime, but you can find Blaze Howl all over the volcanic area. In particular, what I would recommend is just west of Fisherman's Point. Just head on out here at nighttime, and they're very easy to see from the air. They're very bright. Uh, in particular, this whole area is very hot, so if you don't have heat resist, I'd suggest flying straight across to Fisherman's Point. Even if you don't have stamina, you can coast along the water with a flying mount. And then once you get there, just wait for nighttime to get your blaze hell. Hopping back to the PAL deck. Next up is Azure Room which we can find those over here on the island at level 20. Alternatively, we can also get one as a level 17 boss right in this area, just west of Bridge of Twin Knights, uh, giving you access to her very, very early. Talking about our two seeders, the first one in our seeding category. She's a little bit lower. Do, 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 do. There she is. Petalina which we can also find down at this island. And what's really interesting about these, these little islands is generally what you're going to find there are either pals that had previously only been encountered as bosses or variants of pals uh, that you typically encounter as bosses. So definitely check these islands out. Can't recommend them enough. Uh, besides going down there to get Petalina, you can also get her as a boss right over here at level 28, just northwest of the, the Desolate Church zone. As for our other grass one, uh, island is going to be all the way up at this island, uh, up in the low 40s, so keep that in mind if you're going up there to try and get her. But it is definitely one that's going to be worth it. Tier 4 planting, tier 3 handicraft, medicine, gathering. Uh, as for the backup on the medicine, this is another one that we're not going to be able to see because it's not nighttime, but Felbat. Felbats you can find in a couple different areas. I actually got mine from a dungeon, but I have seen them out in in this area moss sand a forest uh, a little bit past the war sex so kind of this zone right here i've found them creeping around i've also found hell zephyrs out there which we'll talk about one of those a little bit later they're very good for uh, for transporting but that is where you can get one if you're concerned about medicine uh, moving on from there let's talk about our electric guys so Grizzbolt, you can get this guy via breeding or alternatively just go down to the little island and snag one uh, if you want to go for the big boy, Relaxosaurus Lux is right here on the map as a boss. Uh, moving on from them, let's talk about Anubis. Now, to breed Anubis, we're actually going to be using this big one that we see right there running around. Are you actually in the base right now? You're usually in my party. I guess it's just mine that's out. Uh, but we're going to be taking a Quivern, and we're going to be breeding that Quivern with a... If I can find it. With a Chillet. I don't know where my Chillet went. Well, either way. Uh, easiest way, right here, Quivern at level 23, just to show where that's at on the map, Sacred Realm of the Winged Tyrant, and then chill it over here, right by Fort Ruins, level 11, breed those, and you're going to get yourself an Anubis. Uh, you could, of course, also just get the Anubis boss, but that's level 47, so that's more of like a, an endgame guide than an advanced guide. Uh, moving on from there, let's talk about our fire crafter. Where did she go? There's our Wixen. Uh, now, Wixen's going to be all over the volcanic area, but I would recommend going right here to get one. There's like a little mini volcano strip. You're going to find lots of fire type stuff. If you don't have a flam bell to produce organs, this is a fantastic spot to also farm up flame organs. You can just go on a killing spree, pop stuff off left and right. You'll come out of there with 100 flame organs easy. Yeah, lots, lots, lots of Wixens over there. Moving on from Wixen, let's talk about Verdash. Verdash we also get on the island. It's going to be the low 40s. Alternatively, we can find him as a boss right here. 
Sacred Realm with a Swift at level 35. That'll be the easiest version of him to go ahead and snatch on up. Uh, moving on from him, we have Bushi, which Bushi we can find on the island as well. Let's see, right over here. Or alternatively, we can occasionally find rare spawns in the volcano. Of course, the easiest way to get a Bushi is right here. Level 23, go grab the boss. Snatch that Bushi up. Uh, moving on from there to our, our miners. Well, the first up is Astagon. Uh, the only place I have seen him is up on this island. Even there, it seemed like he was a rare spawn. While I was there, I only saw one. Uh, alternatively, if you want to get our Digitoys, which are incredibly popular, we can find a bunch of them up here in the desert or in this part of the desert, which is what I'd recommend because this is going to be more the mid-20s, so it's going to be more appropriate in helping to ramp things on up. Uh, moving down from there to our Cryolinks. We can find them all over the mountains. Keep in mind, this whole zone up here is going to be 40 plus. The lowest enemy you're going to find here is probably like 42, 43. So what I would recommend doing if you're a little bit lower, just fly around there. Put on cold armor, fly around, snatch up large eggs you can find, and that'll probably get you a cryolinks. Uh, alternatively, instead of him, if you just want to go for our king penguin, or pen king, we can snatch them from the island right here. Or alternatively, there is a Pen King boss we can fight. If I remember where he is at, right there. Pen King level 15, right next to Sealed Realm of the Frozen Wings, northeast of the Desolate Church. And the last one is going to be our frumpy looking bro down towards the end. Now, I haven't actually found the regular Wumpos yet, but Whoop and Baton we can find over here on this island. Like I said, you're typically going to find a lot of variants there. That's why we can, uh, you know, the island is going to have Jormantide Ignis, while the normal Jormantide we find as bosses. So now that we have covered where to get all the stuff, the next thing I want to talk about is teching up. Because as we begin to tech up, there's a lot of things we're going to need. We're going to need to have access to carbon fiber. We're going to need to have the circuit boards. Uh, in particular, if we're producing the rifle ammo, you're going to need to have access to refined ingots. If you're getting the ultra sphere, we're going to need all that stuff. Cement, refined ingots, carbon fiber. So let's talk about the easiest ways to get some of the stuff. First up is carbon fiber, which is actually very easy. Now, at first glance, you look at it and you're like, coal, oh, where do I get coal? Easier way is just charcoal. Keep a wood farm going. Take all that wood and put all that wood into production in a furnace. And that is going to... No, what did I just pick up? Stone? Somebody pick this stuff up. Uh, but yeah, we can go here. Charcoal, max. Thousand charcoal. That will take care of all of your carbon fiber needs. Just use everything out of the wood farm. That's going to, to handle that. Uh, now I'd already... Uh, oh, I didn't actually talk about Cyblix. I forgot about her. Real fast. Can't, can't go forgetting her. Because she is incredibly important. Where are you at, my dear? She's close to the bottom. Cyblex, Cyblex, Cyblex. Where are you hiding? There we go. So all over the snow region. But once again, this is another one where I just got it out of an egg. So I'd suggest just fly around here. Find large eggs. Find huge ice eggs. Hopefully a Cyblex pops out. And like I said, she is... She is, is the best. She's just going to sit here. She's going to pump out all the cloth. You're not going to need to worry about it. Like, just hopping over here. I'm up to, to what, 39 high cloth, and I've already used a bunch. So she is going to take care of that for you. Uh, talking about the cement real fast, since that's another one that we're going to need to worry about. I think the biggest things people struggle with here are bones. You can actually buy bones and horns from the basic merchant. So we just go right over to the small settlement just to show exactly where this is at real fast. Let me just warp over to it. Anytime I'm out of like some more basic organs. Let's go movement tech. We go to this guy. You can see we have bones, we have horns, we have milk and eggs if you're trying to bake cakes for the breeding, and we have flame, electric, and venom glands. So honestly, at this point, anytime I need this stuff, I just come to this guy and buy it. I don't even bother crafting this stuff anymore. Uh, which, for those curious what we just did there, if you slide and then you go ahead and pull out your glider, you retain the momentum. So anytime there is a downward slope, you can use that to move incredibly fast. Uh, hopping back over. Besides that, the other thing is PAL fluids. And honestly, the best place I've found to get PAL fluids... Just run along the beach. Just take a loop in this, killing everything you find. You're going to come out with like 100 to 200 PAL fluids. So very, very easy to get access to that. 
and go back over to our balls here. Uh, so we've talked about cement, carbon fiber, palladium. Let's discuss briefly. Uh, obviously, we can put palladium. Uh, we can put put stone in our crusher to pump out palladium. And while you can do that, honestly, the best method, because if we go here, you know, we do palladium. I got a lot of stone. All right, that's 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 more palladium that I'm going to use for a while. Yeah, that's what happens when the digitoys just keeps going. Look at them, look at them just pump it out. They're just pumping stone out. Uh, but one of the best ways to get palladium is going to be in dungeons. Hit up palladium deposits in dungeons, and you are going to just get loaded up. So that's what I'd recommend. Now, as for refined ore, that's going to be ore, and it's going to be coal. So next, we're going to hop on over to our coal base and talk about that. Now, the coal base right out here in the Twilight Dunes, these guys just basically full-time work and get coal for me. Just to show this exact location, we are just barely southwest of Anubis. Just to scroll things out, show a better example of it. Um, this is a, a very nice area. Let me uh, get up in the air so you can get a, a good look at this. But you can see we just have this nice little area enclosed. There's roughly six coal deposits that are going to pop up right there. And they are just going to take care of that coal, and we don't need to worry about anything else. Uh, let's see. Let's see how, how they've done since I've last been here. Up to 130. Okay, that's good. Y'all keep working. Uh, now, talking about an auxiliary coal base real fast. I've seen a lot of, of different videos on this. A lot of people mention it. They're like, slap some beds, slap some berries. Yes, do all that. But honestly, I've seen a big increase in production doing one large bed and the large hot spring just because having access to these two it's going to take care of a lot of minor injuries things like sprains uh things like you know if they, they start getting hit with depression or whatnot so just having the bed because if we go over to build you'll see even pals can sleep uh pals can rest when injured or sleep at night high quality height springs now comfier and restores more sanitary or not sanitary restores more sanity uh, just having those two things. I mean, the rest, the rest, we still have our normal beds, but just having one, one large bed here so that if somebody is, is sick, they can sleep on that. I have found good returns in that so far. Now, as for the ore base, I got four dudes mining full time. I got Robin Quill out here. He is handling the seeding as well as the harvesting. We got Dummit out here. He is handling the watering with a little bit of transporting. And then I have a Hell Zephyr out here which Hell's Effort is fantastic for an ore base, in my opinion, because it's just tier three transport. And most importantly, that's the only thing it does. It just transports. So it's not gonna be out here cutting up trees like he is. It's, it's you know, it is waiting and it's gonna transport. That's the only thing it's gonna do. It's just gonna transport, which means the base consistently gets cleaned up. Keep in mind, since this is a nocturnal, right now it's kind of, it's hanging out, but as, as night approaches, it is uh it's getting ready to to get to work uh but you can find all or, or yeah you can find ore all over this area you can also find some of the desert region over here but this has been the spot that has the most deposits i've found so far uh which our, our base we actually moved it to one of the the ore zones i i had previously mentioned just to talk about this base location uh because you know since we shifted our our whole base over i, I honestly found this to be Super nice over here, mainly because anytime a raid happens, the enemies all run down this way, right where that bushy's going, and they go for the gate. Like they're they're set up to path to that gate. Uh, it's very large and flat, so it's a very natural choke point. And you can see I'm able to to fit all the beds. Got a little two tier or tier two house there. I got the the farm, got the breeding area, and I still have plenty of room to not mess with these ore nodes. So I still have a constant amount of ore that's coming in. So really recommend this. I think this out of out of all the areas I have explored, all the various ore bases, I do think right here, I think this is the best area for a first base because you can get to it early in the game. You have a natural checkpoint that stuff funnels into when it invades. We're able to get the ore. Uh, if your guys aren't getting ore, so let me talk about this real fast. Um, occasionally, instead of going for ore, they will go for this. If that is the case, break this down, get all your mats back, let them clean out the ore, put it back up. You might have to do that occasionally. You get everything back when you rebuild it, but that's going to be one of the best ways to ensure that ore production keeps happening if you see too much ore piling on up. Uh, but so that 
covers most of our materials. The last one I want to talk about is quartz. You're going to find quartz up in the snowy regions. I think it might also be in the volcanic regions. I haven't seen any yet, uh, but I have found quartz all over these mountains here. And it is, it's very distinct. You'll see it. It has the same kind of glow that uh, copper ore has, but it's a little bit shinier. So just keep your eye out for that and that will take care of things. Uh, some other stuff to discuss. Nails we don't need to worry about. We've talked about cement and flame organs. We've talked about everything for ultra spheres. Uh, talking about late game weaponry. Well, latish, advanced, I guess. The handgun is interesting, but to be honest, it's not really a lot of good bang for your buck. Uh, it burns through ammo very fast. I will say I like it for softening up a pal right before I catch them. Single shot rifle on the other hand, this thing is fantastic. It's basically just a better crossbow. Very high damage, uh, very accurate, so accurate in fact that it's, it's kind of easy to miss just because stuff will jitter a little bit and then suddenly you miss it. Uh, but very big fan of the, the rifle for a new weaponry. Uh, as for some late game mounts, I've been messing with both Quivern and Beacon as my flying mount. And I don't know if this is just because Quivern is bigger, so it's the perception that I'm moving slower, but I think Beacon is faster. Not 100%, but but I think, I think he is. I think that's the case. And my guy is just freezing. Let me go grab my, my cold armor. That's the problem with having the, the hot armor on. You know, getting cold at night. Uh, on the note of flying mounts, I've seen a lot of people asking this on stream. You don't have a button for it, but you know, right now we're just normally flying. If I just hit shift, you can see we're now sprint flying. Uh, it doesn't tell you that, but you can absolutely hit the sprint button to move faster while you're flying. And I don't think a lot of people are doing that. So definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, but either way, uh, that is going to about wrap things up. Let me just check here. I think we've covered all of the important stuff. We covered everything related to the spheres. Um, ice organs, you just go to the ice zone. Flame organs, we covered where to get those already. We covered refined ingots and getting palladium out of the, the mines. Oh, ancient sieve parts. I don't know if a lot of people know this, but you can re-farm bosses for your, your ancient sieve parts, as well as going back into dungeons. I've had a lot of, uh, when I was first streaming, I, my buddy was like, oh, you have all the sieve parts. Like, no, just kill it again. Go to all this stuff, just kill it again. They just keep pooping out sieve parts for you. Uh, hip lantern, honestly, probably one of the best upgrades in the game. All this natural light that we have right now, that's from the hip lantern. We don't have a torch out or anything. Very, very highly recommend. In fact, going, going down in this tree, uh, talking about some stuff. I haven't made one yet, but I have heard you can move with the grappling gun even while you're overweight. So I probably am going to gonna tech that up because i think i'm almost to the i'm at the giga so i'll probably go ahead and get that go ahead and make a huge feedback um there's many spheres simultaneously that sounds terrible but i'm also kind of curious to use it huh. um either way that is going to wrap things up for now on the advanced guide uh, more than likely i think i'll probably do another one once i reach end game just to update with with any pertinent information that i think is important to know uh, heading on into the end game but you know we've covered where to find some of the stuff we've covered getting your coal base and most importantly we've talked about where to find some of the best pals in the game that keep your base running top notch so thanks for coming on by checking things out uh, hopefully y'all are enjoying pal world as much as i am and i'll see you next time